Global Karma family, we are so excited to be with you once again with the uh, program called The Dwelling Place. And talking about The Dwelling Place, this is the place of peace, the place of comfort, the place where we sit at the feet of Jesus. And we're going to have a wonderful time together tonight. And uh, we have wonderful people, great worship leaders and great musicians with us. We have Michaela. We have uh, Margaret and we have Quentin and also going to hear a powerful testimony from Jordan and I love to hear you know people's uh, story and what the Lord has done in their life but the main thing tonight is we come to the dwelling place when we come and worship the Lord something going to happen in your life I'm talking about my long time experience whenever things are going crazy whenever you know, uh, things are not looking good. I just play some worship and I come and sit at the feet of Jesus. And, and most of us, we know the story that a lady by the name of Martha, she invited Jesus to her house and she has her sister's name is Mary. And Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus. Martha was in trouble and she said she was so troubled. The Bible said this in in, in the book of Luke, uh, chapter 10, I read a couple of verses. It says, but Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him, Jesus, and said, Lord, you, don't you care? I'm doing all this alone. My sister has left me to serve alone. Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things and this is the most important statement ever you can hear it but one thing is needed and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her and this is the main reason we're doing this dwelling place because one thing is needed there is so much confusion there's so much traffic there's so much bad news there's so much problems but we're inviting you tonight to that dwelling place because this is the place where you're going to find comfort this is the place where you're going to find peace this is the place where you can cast your cares your troubles at the feet of Jesus we know some like one of the old testament story that King Saul he used to be troubled with like distressing spirit, talking about depression, talking about stress, talking about heaviness. And the only solution was him. He knew that. So just find me somebody, a worshiper. And his name was David. And the Bible says when David comes and worship, then distressing spirit would leave King Saul. And we have the same principle. This is God's word. And this is the reason we come together tonight. And just when we worship, something is going to happen. Stay with us. Get connected. Just be in tune. Stop any distraction. This is not the time where you flip channels. This is not the time where you're going from Facebook to Instagram and to feed. No, no, no. You try to discipline your flesh. And this is good for you. This is good for me. So we're going to enter into the place of worship we're going to spend some time worshiping the Lord singing invite a friend and just be in tune with the Holy Spirit and then we're going to hear some powerful powerful testimony so stay with us and I'm sure you will be so blessed so it's all yours guys <laughs> Come on, let's sing this song. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We see your name in the dark and it changes everything. We see victory let it rise let praise arise we'll see you break down every wall we'll watch the giants fall fear 
cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side forever lifts him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. Oh, let's sing, let faith. Let faith be the song that overcomes the raging sea. Let faith be the song that calms the storm inside of me. Let it rise. Let faith arise. Let it rise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. Come on, let's sing it one last time. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side forever lifts him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. Oh.
to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. You are. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to
just want to be I just want to be where you are And I just want to be near your heart There is nothing like your love There is nothing like your love
God, we love you, Lord. You are our best friend. You're so holy, Lord. I thank you for we feel your presence here in this studio, Lord, and I'm sure so many are watching now. Feel your love and your presence and your goodness, Lord. It's never enough of worshiping you. It's never enough of crying holy. You're a holy God, and we exalt you, Lord. We exalt you above everything. We honor you, Lord Jesus, tonight. Be glorified through our worship, through our praise, Father. I pray, Father, for every person watching now, that your presence, your love will surround them, that you would encounter them, Lord Jesus. You can see their burdens. You can see their heaviness. You can see their troubles, Lord. I'm asking you to touch every person watching, Lord that you would reveal your love, you would reveal the truth, Father, that you are our best friend. We exalt you, we worship you, Lord. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. What a wonderful, wonderful time of worship. Just everybody here in the studio, they just love the Lord so much, and they came to bless you and to be a blessing to you tonight. So just enjoy that time. Enjoy that time. Show your passion to the Lord. He want to help you. He want to touch you. He want to be your best friend. He is my best friend. He is my lover. He loves us so, so much, and He is real. That's why we're so honored and privileged to come and, and just worship Him and minister to each one of you. Stay with us. We're going to hear amazing, amazing testimony, and then we're going to come back and spend few minutes in worship and then we're going to end this with like a blessing song over you and your family and your children so just enjoy the time okay now it's your turn awesome you are in the spot yeah man <laughs> well, I'm excited thank to be you here. so much for coming and uh, be with us tonight and uh, I just uh, I hear people's stories and it's just uh, you know when it's your story, your testimony, this is yours and no one can take it away from you. So true. So no one can, like when you hear it from somebody, could have some exaggeration or some untruth, but when you, your own testimony, no one can take it away from you. So, so I'll true. do uh, what I know a little bit first about your 26 now. I am 29. 29. Yeah. I got this wrong. The first mm -hmm. one got it wrong. <laughs> yep. And you married, you have a baby. I have a yeah, a baby as well okay. as a six year old uh, six year old girl. So Okay. Yeah, wow. yeah. That's awesome. Awesome little family. So before I ask you further, where, how did you meet your wife? Because a lot of singers here are watching and they love to hear that. Just briefly, how did you meet Jess? Yeah, so um, you know, I was part of Bethel Church for a while and uh, I moved down here um, and was starting to get involved in the community and ministry stuff down here in Orange County, California. And my wife was actually helping to host a conference, a Bethel conference that was happening down here. Okay. And I brought a ministry team to the church and 
met her and just kind of went from there. We just liked each other and started hanging out. And um, since then, we've been on mission trips together. We've um, done all kinds of cool things, done so, so much outreach and great things. We've had a, a lot of fun together. So it's been Isn't it's been that amazing. amazing to meet your wife when you're serving the Lord? It is. It's, it's the ultimate, in my I opinion. did the same, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. It's just yeah. amazing when you're doing God's will and walking yeah. in your calling, mm -hmm. and here's your wife showed up. Totally. And I always <laughs> knew that she, I was going to know the, when I met her. Like, I didn't date any, or at all before. I didn't um, wow. anything, and it just, I just clicked right away, and I knew, so... Okay, yeah, yeah. but tell me about like your background, uh, family you came from, and also the transformation would happen in your life and your age at this time. You told me like recently, and I was really so blessed to hear it. So I want the viewers to hear yeah. from you. Totally, yeah. yeah. I mean, I grew up in the Central Valley here in California. Okay. Um, grew up on a farm. So, um, you know, my family was in and out of church, my, mainly Baptist church. So I didn't really know about God's love or anything like that. I, I knew about... God, like brimstone and fire, like God's probably mad at you most of the time. You're probably doing something wrong most of the time. The best thing you can do is to just, you know, do your best and hope it works out when you get to heaven. <laughs> so that was how I grew up. And obviously that isn't how God is. And so um, I was, you know, grew up in the ranch cowboy world and I uh, apprenticed with a, a saddle maker, a Western saddle maker. And he was a spirit filled man and he uh, would be praying in tongues while he was working on saddles. And so you're making saddles for horses and yeah, camels exactly. and things like yeah. that? Wow. Yep. And um, so he, he would be praying in tongues while he was working, and I had no idea what that was. I had never heard of it. Um, I was like, what language is that? I would ask him. And, uh, he was like, it's praying in tongues. You never heard of it? And so I was like, no, I've never heard of that. And so he started telling me you know, about the Holy Spirit, about the gift of praying in tongues, about how you can lay hands on the sick and see miracles. And I was just like, that's crazy. I don't know if I believe that or not. And so um, after a few weeks of How him, old were you? I was 17 at that time. Oh, wow. Or 16, Young boy. 16, actually. Yeah. Wow. And um, so after a few weeks of him showing me Bible verses and trying to convince me and show me all this stuff, I was finally just laying in bed one night. And I was like, okay, God, if this is real, if the Holy Spirit's real, if healing and miracles and all this stuff is still for today, then just baptize me in the Holy Spirit right now. And in that moment, I didn't actually feel anything. <laughs> but I woke up the next day, and I looked outside, and all of a sudden, I just started crying. And, like, I, whenever I saw people, I started crying because I wasn't just seeing people. I was seeing, like, their hearts and, like, God's heart for them. Uh -huh. And it was the most crazy thing. It was the weirdest day of my entire life and the most amazing day of my entire life. That's amazing because you've heard about it. You didn't know about it. Mm -hmm. But because you're so sincere and you want anything from God, yeah. from the Holy Spirit... So the encounter happened with you, like the next day, yeah. even God started to give you like heart for the lost people, not just to get baptized with the Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. speaking exactly. in tongues, but you get a heart for the people. Yeah. That's awesome. And yeah, so from there, I was like, okay, well, I guess this stuff is real. And I just didn't know what to do with it from that point. And then uh, one day I was back at home visiting my parents because I lived on the other side of California. And my dad uh, had back problems, and he literally was walking and fell to the ground in front of me because his back wow. um, got injured. And so I put my hands on his back. I was like, okay, if this is real, we're going to find out right now. <laughs> and so I just put my hands on his back just like this, and I said, pain, get out in Jesus' name. And that was literally all I said. And then instantly my dad jumps up off the ground in, like, freaking out. And I hadn't even told him about any of this stuff yet. And he jumps up off the ground, freaking out, like running around the room. He's like, what did you just do? What did you just do? 16 years old. Yeah. Oh and I was goodness. like, I have no idea. <laughs> and um, it was just like the craziest thing. And I had chills. And he was like, there's like fire in my back. Like, I don't know what just happened. And wow. I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, this is real. And so from that moment on, I was like a healing machine. Like, I just, everywhere I went, I wanted to pray for everybody I could find whether they were in a wheelchair or had a cast on their leg. Um, also, I started quickly just Man, you're trying. going too fast. This is awesome. Oh, man. <laughs> Amazing experience. No, I don't mean to yeah. interrupt you. Just so I want people to digest that. I want people to get that. Yeah. It's not your own experience. You're 16 years old. Mm -hmm. You haven't been, like, preaching the gospel. It's just one encounter. And God put this, uh, like, your boss doing the settle mm -hmm. back in your way. 
because God can put someone in your way and God can use that person to transform your life. Just be open. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to interrupt. Just no. keep, keep, keep going, man. I can go on for days. So. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, and then once all that happened, I started just being like, I want to explore all the things that God has. And okay. I wanted to learn about all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And yeah. so I had heard about word of knowledge and how you can actually get a word from God for someone else and okay. understand that maybe there's pain in their body or something that's happening in their life. And so um, I started asking people just at the mall or on the sidewalk, like, hey, do you have pain in your knee? And then like a lot of the time I was right. Like they'd be like, yeah, how did you know that? And then I'd be like, well, God told me you had pain in your knee. And so I would pray for them, and then they would get healed. And it was amazing, you know. And um, so that started happening more and more, and I was just getting lots of just God was just showing me what was happening in people's bodies. And, I mean, the thing is, is like, anyone can do this. Literally anyone can do it. It's all about just being open to the Holy Spirit, being yeah. receiving of what he wants to show you, and getting rid of fear, like a fear of man, like just being like, I know that God loves everyone in front of me, and He wants to heal them. He wants to restore them. He yeah. has a plan to prosper them. So, Well, let me stop you right here, because when you speak about word of knowledge, mm -hmm. I just want to tell the viewers, it's one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It is in the Bible, and we have a very, very real example that Jesus, when He met with a Samaritan woman, you know, she was get in some water, so he met her where she's at, and he asked her for a drink, which is amazing how we learn that we go to people's words, people's life, but he got a word of knowledge. He told her, go invite your husband, mm -hmm. and that got really strange question, but he knew, and she said, I don't have a husband. He says, this is the truth you said because you have five, and the one you live in now is not your husband. This is the word of knowledge, and this is biblical. And this mm -hmm. is available for every person. However, the benefit of that and the purpose of that, it's not just about me, my blessing, <laughs> and I. It's about others. Totally. And this is what I want you to hear from Jordan here. Like, God is giving him words about others not to show off, not to be, like, superior in the spirit. No, to minister to the people for the cause of evangelism. The gift of the Spirit are available for every person for the cause of evangelism and reaching out the lost. You go every morning, Huntington Beach, with your bike to get a coffee. Yeah. Six in the morning, mm -hmm. and you minister to people. Tell me about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, pretty much everywhere I go, I'm you know encountering people, whether it's um, getting coffee in the morning or on a mission trip, trip with my family or whatever it is we're doing. I mean, thing just, things just happen all the time. I mean, um, yeah, like in our outreach in Huntington Beach, we've seen all kinds of really amazing miracles, people getting healed, people getting, getting saved. Uh -huh. And um, it's been exciting even being a part of what you've done uh, once or twice. We've seen you down there as well. So, um, yeah, it's been awesome. But, um, yeah. That's good, good. Uh, you told me also that you traveled some... Uh, countries and doing mission feel at young age. Tell me about that. Yeah, so at this point I've been to almost 30 countries, I believe, um, including oh North Korea, China, wow. countries that are harder to get into, um, <laughs> doing all kinds of amazing outreach and uh, things like that. And I've had some pretty wild encounters and wild uh, healing, you know, testimonies and things like that. So it's been really cool. So what was the motive in your heart, young age, everybody want to get a career and get wealth. Uh, you're a business owner too, I know that, I forgot to mention. But what was the motive for you to go to those 30 countries at this young age? What's the drive? What's the passion? Yeah, I mean, I think honestly for me, it was like, I just want everyone to know about this stuff. They, I want everyone to know that God has a good plan for them. He's not mad at them. He has a good plan. He wants to heal you. He wants to prosper you. He wants to um, help you have an encounter so that you can be an encounter for someone else, you know what I mean? And so um, that was really my drive was I just, I wanted to get out there and spread it as far as I could. And I also uh, am passionate about just seeing different places in the world and meeting different types of people. Mm -hmm. And um, it's crazy, no matter where you go, like, it just seems like people are so passionate everywhere. Like, it's uh -huh. not like here in America, people are more passionate or in El Salvador, people are more, it's like, no matter where you go, there's always people that are just absolutely on fire, and it's such a cool experience to be part of that and uh -huh. learn from them and teach and everything. So, yeah. 
Wow. Uh, how about your experience in Bethel? How long you stayed in Bethel in Reading? Yeah, so I was at Bethel for five or six years, um, which was amazing. I um, led treasure hunts there. So treasure okay. hunts um, was started by Kevin Dedman, who I think you've actually interviewed here before. Yeah. Um, he is a mentor, best friend of mine. So I interned with him. Um, I led treasure hunts up there. So treasure hunts is where you basically take a piece of paper and you ask God, you spend some time with God, and you say, God, who do you want to encounter today, and how am I going to find them? And you start getting clues from the Holy Spirit. So, like, maybe get in your car. You're going to write down step one, get in your car. Step two, go to the mall. Step three, go to the shoe store that's around the corner in the mall. And then you'll say, find someone with a red sweatshirt. And you ask God for all those clues, and then you go do it, and you find those, that person. And you show oh them goodness. your map, and you say, hey... I, I, God told me I was going to find you here. Look, at I had this written down. Oh, my goodness. And here's some things that he also told me about you. He told me that, you know, you, uh, you know, your parents are having a hard time and you're going through it or whatever. So it's really cool that you can uh, go out and do that. So I led that up there um, as well as lots of ministry trips in the U.S. as well as mission trips outside the U.S., um, all types of different teamwork and stuff up there. So, uh, uh, Well, couple of things. I always tell people like your anointing is waiting for you in your place of assignment. Because if you don't go out, you're not going to get those words of knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> because you have the courage and the passion to go out, mm -hmm. then the anointing of the Holy Spirit and words of knowledge are waiting for you at that place mm -hmm. where you go minister to people. Uh, well, it's very, very important point here that you are really driven with passion to reach the lost and for evangelism. What would you tell the believers? They don't know what to do. They've been sitting in the church. They love God. They're great people, but they don't have the courage, don't have the strategy, don't have anything, and they're just afraid to get mm -hmm. out of the four walls and the church and the safe place and the fellowship of the believer, which is all great. Mm -hmm. All great. Sorry. So yeah. I want you to look at the camera and just tell people what to do to be able to go out and reach the lost and, yeah. and be encouraged. So Totally, yeah. I mean, honestly, I feel like it's all about just starting small. Take small steps, and God will honor you in that. He'll strengthen you. He'll give you more ideas to go to the next level and do bigger things. And, you know, everyone is sort of like a lake or a pond. And if you don't have water flowing through you, you become stagnant. And so it just takes... You know, busting down the dams in your life, breaking down the things that are keeping the water of the Holy Spirit from just flooding, you know, everything around you. So, you know, we're supposed to be rushing rivers with the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, everything flowing through us, words of knowledge, prophecy. So the best way to really start is start small and get with a friend. If you have a friend that you can do it with, um, maybe start by praying for a friend, um, praying for someone in your workplace, maybe. Uh, family members, things like that. And then once you start to get a feel for what it's like, um, you can expand out from there. So, oh. Yeah. How did you, or how do you overcome the fear of speaking to a stranger at the beach mm -hmm. and tell him like word of knowledge or something, or even if you don't have a word of knowledge, how to open a conversation with mm -hmm. somebody random, doesn't go to church, mm -hmm. drinking or whatever he's doing. How do you start conversation with that and, and minister to them or witness to them? Yeah, totally. And I've talked to some people that were very scary. I've met with MS-13 gang members in Central America before. And one of the things that I always think about is just how does God see this person? Like, oh, I wow. don't care how I see them. They, they might look scary or intimidating, but you just have to realize that God actually sees them as like a little child who's hurt and broken and just look at it from that perspective and you really won't feel afraid if you just look at it through that lens. And when you're in that moment coming up to someone that might look intimidating, even if they're not intimidating, um, you know, you really just want to come out of a place of compassion. Like Jesus never did anything unless he felt compassion on a person to help them or heal them. Um, so if you're not feeling compassion, you know, check yourself, like say, where am I at right now? How do I feel about this person? Um, and how does God feel about this person, and then start to get words for them and, and then kind of take it from there. And it doesn't have to be a big deal when you pray for someone out in public or at your workplace or whatever. It can be very simple. It can just be like, hey, I just felt like God wants you to know that he is proud of you today. He loves you, and you're doing a great job at your work or taking care of your family, and just keep it simple. And then as you start to step out and do things like that, 
the words of knowledge will start to flow. Things will start to come to you. And, um, you know, God gives you things when you take that first step so that you can actually bless them to an even greater level. Um, do you have any other unique small story, like the one happened with your dad uh, and somebody from the street and miracle yeah. happened? I know you have a lot. Just tell us yeah. one or two short ones. <laughs> it's I know. I mean, I've had people. some really <laughs> wild ones. We had yeah. a a young girl in Central America that was totally deaf, couldn't hear anything. And we just prayed over her ears for like 10 seconds because God doesn't need a long prayer to do a miracle. <laughs> and we were just, ears be healed in Jesus' name. And we didn't even know she was healed at first until we held a guitar up to her ears and started strumming it. And she was like, what is that? And she could hear the guitar and she had never been able to do that. And then, um, I mean, there's just so many miracles. Another time I was... Um, living in Mozambique and we went into a hospital and there was a man with a broken leg and he had a rod going through his leg for the healing process and he had recently broken it in a motorcycle accident and so I prayed over his leg again I don't do long prayers for people you don't have to pray and pray and pray and beg you can actually just command healing you say be healed mm. in Jesus name and that's all it takes and um, it's okay to pray twice too I pray twice all the time Sometimes they're not healed the first time, and you'll pray, mm. say, hey, can I pray for you one more time? I just want to pray for you again. And you pray, be healed in Jesus' name, and then sometimes the miracle will come the second time. Um, uh. But I prayed for this man's leg that was totally broken with the rod going through the middle of his leg, and prayed for him, and then all, he was like just freaking out. He grabbed the rod and started shaking his leg around. like He's like, there's no pain. It's like totally good, and then he started walking around. And uh, just crazy stuff like that where you're like, I can never turn this down. Like, this is, this is crazy. This is real. This is God encountering these people. You know, it's undeniable. So It's amazing the power of God and, you know, the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, what you're telling us. And it, this is not stuff like you uh, go uh, 10 years of school of uh, theology no. to learn. This is stuff. No, you no. Know? Yeah. It's, just the it's better if you don't, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's better if you don't. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. Well, uh, of course, before we pray for the people, because I know there are so many people watching, really, you know, suffering some different mm -hmm. disease and problems, and God's going to use you for sure. I know that. But one more question before we pray for the people. Mm -hmm. What's your passion and your heart for the future, the days to come for advancing the kingdom? Yeah. Like, tell people your desires, your passion mm -hmm. for advancing the kingdom. You're doing very well as a family, as a business. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. But this is the stuff just to pay the bills, right? Yeah, for <laughs> but sure. But your heart and you live for God. So tell us about that. Yeah. Um, well, there's kind of two fronts. One is, I mean, globally in general, I feel like we're ready for a major revival. There's so much moving in mm -hmm. politics and um, globally. There's so much happening that we're ready for a global revival, I believe. Man. Um, and then... Personally, I think that um, for me, you know, God really has me in a time of building wealth, actually, to help support mission stuff. And um, like I was a missionary all over the world, but the problem was is that there was never enough funding. And I was like, I'd be more useful right now to go home and make money and send to my friends that are out there. Uh -huh. And so that's actually where I'm at right now is I'm in a phase of building businesses and making money to support what's happening in the places that I've already been to. And then my goal is to, you know, keep going back to those places, building, doing more, and supporting what's going on all over the world. So, Wow, what a great model, you know, uh, what you're doing for the kingdom and just your heart and your passion. And, and, and one thing I, I caught from you is just uh, having the heart of God towards the street people. Because mm -hmm. we always look at people and judge them. You know, why mm -hmm. do you don't go get a job? Why don't you do, why are you doing this to themselves? Mm -hmm. But they are, first of all, they are slave to this, you know, bondage. Mm -hmm. But to look at them with the heart of God, that's changed the whole scenario. Yeah. Time goes by so fast, mm -hmm. but uh, just... Take your time, pray, look at the camera, and whatever words the Lord will give you, just pray for the people. Yeah, and uh, yeah, totally. So, yeah, well, um, I kind of actually have some words of knowledge, if you don't mind me sharing. Sure, of I course. Just, yes. I, obviously, there's no way for me to confirm. If you do have a miracle, obviously email in or call in or whatever it is. But um, I just keep hearing something like spleen or um, pancreas, like issues with some of those organs in your body. 
if you have issues in any part of your organs in your body, I just want to command healing over your body right now in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. um, if that's you out there, just put your hand on your stomach right now. And um, I just declare healing over your body, healing over your organs right now in Jesus' name. I also um, sense that there's someone out there that does have, I know I mentioned earlier, knee pain, but I do feel like there's people actually that when I said that, they were like, oh, I need healing for my knee. And out there right now, I just feel like there's someone that needs healing for their knee. So I just declare healing over your knee. Um, people who are suffering from headaches, I just command headaches to go in Jesus' name as well. Um, and for those of you who are looking to um, heal the sick, that want to step into new gifts and things like that, I just want to pray over you right now as well. Mm. So I just release uh, anointing for healing the sick right now. I just release a boldness over you right now in Jesus' name that you will just be so strong and bold to go out and pray for people, mm -hmm. pray for your family, pray for your coworkers, pray for anyone that you encounter in your daily life. And I just pray for just a radical shift in how you think right now, the radical shift in how you see people, that you could see them through how God sees them, the lens mm -hmm. that God sees people as a little child that needs help, that needs encouragement, that needs love, that needs guidance. And um, so, yeah, I just release that over you right now, and I release a peace over your heart that you won't feel scared to reach out. You won't feel scared to release what God has for other people. And um, I just release a mindset over you that what you have to give other people is a gift, something mm -hmm. they're dying for. They're literally dying for it. Mm -hmm. And so we just declare that over you right now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Wow, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. You can see us. We cannot see you. But we know the Holy Spirit is here. The Holy Spirit is touching so many. So don't take those prayers lightly. We want to uh, get into another time of praise and worship and just keep, you know, believing because your faith will make you well, the Bible said. Your faith will make you well. Believe in this like a child, like God encountered Jordan at age 16 or 17, changed his life. And for the last 13 years, look what the Lord, how the Lord used him just for having a simple faith and being passionate and trust to God. And, 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 and it's amazing how at a young age, just God has given him the heart of Jesus towards the lost. And this is something no one can take it away from him or from you, or from me. So uh, we're going to get into uh, another season of praise and worship and just stay with us. And I believe for your miracle tonight. I believe God's going to touch you. You might not see it now, like what didn't happen with him the same night, you know, that uh, his uh, boss prayed for him. But the next morning, but God is still in the miracle business. God is still God. He loves you. He want to change your life. He want to get you out of like four walls, out of the cave. He want to use you. He wants his family, his children to flourish. And there is revival coming. And God only going to use me and you. We are his extension here on earth. You know, when there is a nation, they have ambassadors in, in different countries. We are the ambassadors of Christ. God, all his hope is on the church, on us. So we can go and declare his goodness, preach the gospel, be the light and be the answer. So I want you to be one of them. God did not call you to live the life of defeat. God did not call you to be like a victim. He's calling you to flourish. So shake off any heaviness, any burdens, any lights from the enemy. Shake it off and flourish. And God is going to use you in a mighty way. You know, David, he ran to the battle because he knew who was behind him. He knew that he's fighting for God. And he was not afraid of the uh, battlefield. He was able to run to the battlefield and fight Goliath and enjoy the victory. Let's spend time with our wonderful people in, in praise and worship and we'll come back and, and uh, pray with you again. Yeah. We thank you for being a healing God. Thank you for being in control, God. You sit upon the throne forever, and you won't be removed. You won't be removed. I choose this day to be grateful. Give you praise 
with an open mind. I'm waking up to heaven. I'm waking up to you. I'm waking up to heaven. this day to be grateful Lord I give you praise with an open heart I'm waking up to heaven I'm waking up to you I'm waking Waking up to heaven. I'm waking up to you. For always being good. For always being good. Thank you for mercies that are new.
I'm telling Cause you never left God, I say thank you. Because you make me whole, God, I'll sing thank you. Because you're my best friend, God, I'll tell you thank you. For making ways where there was none, God, I'll sing thank you. you're going through right now I don't know maybe you're watching right now and you're going through something really tough maybe you're going through something that you've never gone through before um, I was reading the book of Psalms before um, the past week and 
Psalm 37, 24 says, Though they stumble, they will never fall, for the Lord holds them by the hand. And uh, if you think about it, I, I looked up the actual definition of stumble, and it says trip or momentarily lose one's balance. And it's, I think the key part is momentarily, because it's not permanent, you know. So don't waste your energy on something that's not permanent. You may stumble now, but so what? There's no way but standing up. You will never fall because God is holding you, and He's holding you by His hand. So this next song that we're going to be singing, um, it helps me go through my, the hard times, and hopefully if you're feeling lost, it will guide you as it guided me when I was feeling lost. So. We look to you, God, and I pray for those who are struggling right now, feeling lost, no, not knowing the next step. God, I just pray that you will just be the comfort to those people, the God, that was struggling. We look to you, God. We look to you, God. to you I won't be overwhelmed give me vision to see things like you do God I look to you you're where my help comes from give me wisdom you know just what to do and I will I will love you. And I will love you. I just want you, where you at now, just lift up your heart and pray. Prayer is a simple thing, just talking to God. I don't know what's going on inside of you, but I'm asking every person now, just pray for a minute. Whatever you feel inside of you, whatever the Holy Spirit is inspiring you, reminding you, bringing it into your memory, the Lord will not touch you. He want to bless you. He want to change your life. We're here. My heart's full of joy as we're sitting, all of us here, and just worshiping the Lord and ministering to you. 
you're not just flipping this channel like a coincidence or by accident. There is a purpose for your life. There is a calling upon your life. He want to lift you up like we heard from Margaret. I don't know what you're going through, but he knows what you're going through. And he has a better plan for your life. He has a good thoughts towards you, the Bible said. And we live in those days where darkness will cover the earth. And deep darkness will cover the nations. That's not me, that's Isaiah 60. And I feel this scripture now like never before. But the Lord is saying, upon you, upon you, the light will shine and the glory will be seen. As we heard from Jordan, this the greatest revival, the global revival is at hand. And we don't want to miss, it's the greatest time ever where we're going to see the move of God. And I don't, want you to, I don't want you to be distracted with the things of life. We read in the beginning of the episode about Mary and Martha. Martha was so distracted, she was troubled. But Mary made the choice to sit at the feet of Jesus. And I know we're going to sing, you know, blessing songs in a few minutes. But we love you enough to tell you one thing. Maybe you've heard the story about Noah and the ark when you were in Sunday school. But this story was so real. Noah was an old man. He was doing something crazy. Everybody said, this man is crazy. Everybody, almost everybody. They did not believe what he was saying. They did not believe what he was doing. And they just were living their own life. But the story will tell us that he was right and all were wrong. And we're here to tell you tonight that Jesus is real. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about relationship. I've experienced myself for years. I was raised in a church. My dad was a pastor. I was doing everything good. But one day, when I was 14, my life has been totally transformed. Like we heard from Jordan, it was not the same way. But I was full of fear. I was afraid of tomorrow. I was afraid of death. I was afraid of darkness. And all this thing has been hidden inside of me, cannot talk about it. But one night, I felt the love of Jesus. I felt the closeness of his presence. So good. And that day I will never forget was July 23rd, 1974. Since that day, my life has been transformed. And I know I was asking everybody to come to the ark, but he says, no, you're crazy. What you're saying is wrong. What you're doing is wrong. He was right. But the most significant part of this story, what really can shake anyone from inside out, that the Bible said that the Lord shut the door of the ark, not Noah. So man can do nothing for you. You can say you excuse this to man, but he cannot help you. But when the Lord shut the door, then there was no opportunity for no one to get saved. And we don't know what tomorrow can bring. We live in the unknown. I don't wanna be negative, but you go to the Facebook now every day. Who died, who lost his life, and just very sad, especially after COVID. So tomorrow is not guaranteed for me or for you. If my mission here on earth is ended, will be no tomorrow for me, but I will be in a better place. I don't know about you. We love you enough to tell you there is heaven and there is hell. And we're here to give you the greatest invitation. It's amazing, amazing to get the Lord will touch your body, will heal you. But the greatest miracle is your eternity. And I want to pray with you. Be sincere. I cannot see you. You can see me. I don't know you. Maybe you don't know me. But we love you enough to tell you, if you never encounter that real personal relationship with the Lord Jesus, just be honest with yourself. 
I always tell people, you can go to Las Vegas and gamble for $100, $1,000. It's no big deal. But you cannot gamble with your life. You cannot gamble with your eternity. Your breath can go in and won't come out. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just being real. Because I see people who are sitting with us here, and they're not here anymore. You know friends, you know families, you know so many people. Just their life ended on the unexpected. So I want to invite you to open up your heart. Dear Lord, just come into my heart. I want to start a new relationship with you. I want to experience what I heard from Jordan. I want to experience the joy in the hearts of those wonderful people being singing and praising and worshiping. God is inviting you to be part of his amazing family ever on earth. And this is real. This Bible is the greatest book ever, the most translated book in the history, the most best-selling book in the history. And it carries the testimony of the good news. Jesus is the Savior. He is the only way. And if you don't do anything, if you didn't get anything of tonight, this is what we're going to leave with you. God can write your name in the book of life. He can wash away your shame, your guilt, your sins, your iniquities. The devil will put guilt and shame on you. People even can judge you and condemn you. But the woman came, was caught in adultery, and he defended her. He want to defend you from your enemies. He want to defend you from the devil. And he want to receive you if you open up your heart. Tell him, I come to you the way I am. I ask you to wash me. Wash away my sins. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. Make a way. You said you are the way. You are the only way to the Father. Write my name in the book of life. Ask him to forgive your sin. And he will do it. He will do it by faith and your life will be totally transformed. Now we're going to uh, the last song, and just, uh, I can't thank you guys enough for an amazing, amazing time, and I know we're gonna have more time together. We'd like to, uh, like to have you share your hearts in the future, but yeah. I know the time is coming so short. So stay with us for the blessing song. We speak blessing over you and your family and your all your children's, 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 just a beautiful, beautiful song we're going to end it, our time together with. Thank you. Lord bless you. And keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Lord,
children, the children, the children may favor be upon you in a thousand generations, and your families, and your children, and the children, and the children. May his favor be upon you to a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and the children, and the children. over your family, over your businesses, over your marriage, over your children. Blessings are real. And when we claim this blessing, when we speak this blessing, when we sing this blessing, it's real and you're going to experience it. And whom the Lord bless, no one can curse. So be, be blessed. Thank you, guys. Thank you, uh, Michaela. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Quentin. Thank you, Jordan. That was so, so, so amazing and beautiful. And uh, we need more of this. So, uh, yeah, that was okay. awesome. <laughs> Love you guys, and thank you so much for staying with us. The Lord bless you. And uh, we'll be back with you with another episode of The Dwelling Place. Be blessed.